notice you guys have walked 100 k's. There's a farm around here somewhere, right? Somebody can tell me I've been on the wrong road for Tipperdilla for the last two hours. Teach you to climb through a barbed wire fence. Okay. Let's find your owner. Find the right road to Tibadilla, huh? Easy, 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 easy. Okay, you stay here. Don't play with the handbrake or the horn. Hello? Hello? Morning. I've got a goat outside. It might be yours. It's got a cut leg. I'll exchange it. No, no, I'm Ben Green. Sorry, I, I did knock. I hope Mr. Woodruff might come. Is my father all right? This is, uh... No, I'm... I'm really sorry. He's, uh... He's dead. I feared so. I did. been dead for a while. I kissed Papa goodnight last night while he read in his chair. This morning I thought he was still sleeping. So I let him sleep. I made breakfast and waited. I touched him. I felt nothing so cold. I thought... Hey, hey, it's okay. It's okay. I think he would have died in his sleep. He wouldn't have felt any pain. What's your name? M Millie Orcott, Mr. Green. Uh, ben. So, Mr. Woodruff, is he a neighbour? Can I ring him? Can I ring him to get him over here? What's wrong? Ring? Yeah. Are you on the phone? Phone. Yeah, a telephone, you know. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know what you mean. You've never heard of a phone? Right. No problem. Um, well, this Mr. Woodruff, he is a neighbour. I didn't see any coming in. Does he live the other way? Mr. Woodruff opens our hearts to God. Fair enough, but where, where does he live? I don't know. He comes. So who'd be your nearest neighbour, then? I don't know. Right, well, I, um, I better go and notify the authorities. I'd, I'd like you to come with me, okay? That'll mean staying here on your own. You want to stay here with... That's Papa. You speak as though I should be afraid of him. No, I, um, I... Look, I'll be back as soon as I can, okay? I promise.
normal procedure, Miss Alcott. Your father will be taken to Burrigan. Uh, that's the closest centre to this farm. They'll perform an autopsy there. When there's a death, then the cause is unknown. There has to be an autopsy. Do you know what an autopsy is? Well, not to worry, Miss Alcott. Now, I have to uh, get some information. It shouldn't take too long. Now, we know that you last saw your father alive last night. Uh, about what time? Frank, uh, no clocks. Oh, right. Well, was it uh, just after dark? A little later? Much later? Before I went to bed. Right. Now, uh, did your father have any uh, illnesses that may have contributed to his death? God keeps us well in body, mind and soul. Uh-huh. Uh, what about uh, your relatives, Al? Your mother? Any brothers, sisters? My mother went away years ago. I see, yeah. Uh, or any other relatives? Papa never said. Well, uh, what about this Mr. Woodruff? Uh, would it help if I talked to him? Well, it sounds like he's the local minister. All right. Well, I'll give him a try anyway. Right, uh, that's all I need now, Miss Alcott. I'll be back in touch again when it's time to make the funeral arrangements. Once again, uh, deeper sympathies. I'll be off now. Thanks, man. I'll be all right. Thank you, Mr. Green. Look, those goats are okay for the moment, but that fence needs to be fixed properly. I could do that. Please, for you. Mr. Green. I will be all right. Thank you. Oh, hi. Just pop back. I, I know you didn't. You said you'd be okay, but uh, it's the goats. They might break through the fence again and run off. I think you're very gallant, Mr. Green. Am I? You offered. I declined. But you persisted. That's gallantry. I've read of it. Okay. I almost didn't find this place again. It's a bit off the track, isn't it? Pardon? Oh, this place a bit isolated. Is it? Well, don't you think so? I'm sorry. I don't know. Well, getting into town and back, it... can I ask you something? Tell me to mind my own business if you like, but do you get off this farm much? Uh, into town, say? Well, when was the last time? Never. You've never been off this farm in your life? You were born here? What about school? Papa educated me. Here? Yes, he buys me books, you see. Beautiful books. There's a whole new world to be found in every one. Horizons as wide as one's imagination. Looks like you've got every Victorian novel ever written. Papa promised I'd like them, and I have. I also have my Bible, which I like just as much. You seem to prefer things the way they were. I don't know. He only said the world was a place not worth knowing. Thank you, Miss Alcott. I've uh, been in touch with the Burrigan Hospital. Your father died of a cerebral hemorrhage. It would have been very quick. Now, the funeral arrangements, would you like me to ask them to go ahead and make them for you? Yes, thank you, sir. Right. Just one other thing. I haven't been able to find any trace of this Mr Woodruff. Now, none of the local clergy are named Woodruff and, and no one knows him. Well, it was just a guess. Millie, any other thoughts where we might be able to find him? I'm afraid not, Mr. Green. Well, I suppose he'll just turn up. I'm sorry, I didn't think it'd take this long to finish.
G'day. What can I do for you? Well, are you look busy there? Oh, just helping out. Uh, ben Green's the name. Woodruff. Leon Woodruff. Right, we've been looking for you. You heard about Dan? No. I'm sorry, but he, uh, he died the night before last in his sleep. Ah. Uh, well, he had been unwell for some time. Now, that's a tragedy. How's Millie? She's fine, considering. She, uh, she came up with your name. Actually, the only name we were looking for neighbours, friends, anyone could give a hand. I got the impression you were a clergyman. I'm the Alcott family pastor. So you are the clergyman? Well, not of the kind that you assume, Mr Green. Um, the organised church has lost a good many of its followers for various reasons, and uh, I suppose that I'm one of them. So how long have you known the Alcotts? Well, ten years. Maybe you can tell me, why has Millie grown up like this, so, so removed from everything? A dance decision. A good, misguided man. In what way? Oh, protecting Millie from a world in which she had lost all faith. Uh, his wife walked away from them uh, within months of Millie's birth. It crippled his life and did much the same to his view of life in general. He didn't want Millie to suffer in the same way that he did. Oh, I talked about healing, but I could never win. So I settled for a gentleman not to abandon Christ, which he'd done in the organised form. Billy, Mr Woodruff just showed up. It's a really decent bloke. He said he'd come back and see you later. <laughs> oh, is it really pouring outside? Ah! Billy, what is it? What is it, pain? <laughs> tell me where it is. Billy, come on, tell me. I can't help you if you don't tell me where it is. Come on, Billy. Billy? Pregnant. It won't be long now. This is one of your neighbours. Do you recognise him? What manner of machine is that? <laughs> it's a tractor. It's used for ploughing. She wears trousers. Like a man. Well, lots of girls do. Uh. What is it? Another pain? Uh. Don't worry. We'll be at the hospital soon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bless the Lord, my soul, my inner, my heart. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, my soul, and forget none of his benefits. He pardons all my guilt. He heals all my suffering. He rescues me from the pit of death and surrounds me with constant love. When did the pain start? About an hour or so, maybe longer. She didn't say. How long between contractions? Five, ten minutes. Just five. Okay, you better wait outside. Yeah. Alex, I, I don't think she understands. What? I don't think she understands what's happening to her. She's had no contact with other people. She's lived with her father in total isolation. Ah! We can handle this. Ah! With thee, O Lord, I have sought shelter. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Bow down and hear me. Come quickly to my rescue. <gasps> Be thou my rock of refuge, a stronghold to keep me safe. Millie, Millie, do you know what's happening to you? <sighs> thou art to me both stronghold and rock. <sighs> Lead me and guide me in the honour of thy name. <sighs> I am dying. How can this happen in the 80s? Well, these cases are rare, I'll grant you, but they're not unknown. I just don't understand how she knows nothing of a condition. Seems she only knows what her father wanted her to know. Nothing. Nothing of this century, anyway. He must have noticed her pregnancy. He could at least have told her something. Yes. According to Ben, she's had no contact with anyone except her father and the clergyman. Well, she's definitely had contact with someone. Millie? 
Now, what's happening to you is perfectly natural. Can you slide across here? Just slide your bottom across, dear. That's a girl. There we go. Good now, girl. Millie, you must believe me. You're not dying. You're having a baby. This cannot be. I'm not married. Now, I want you to trust me and Matron Sloan and try and do what we tell you. Can you do that? All right. Ah! All right, my dear. Just squeeze ah! me yeah, squeeze me. Relax. I want you to take nice, deep breaths. In deeply. Out slowly. In deeply. Good girl. Good girl. You keep it up. In deeply. Out slowly. The baby's fine. Pulse 92. Mm -hmm. Good girl. Fully dilated. What does that mean? That means it won't be long. Ah! Ah! Okay, now. Push. Push. Good. Good girl. Oh, now. Here's the head. Just a couple more pushes. You're doing very well, dear. You keep it up. Now, come on. Nice, deep breath. And push. Good. Good girl. You have a daughter. A daughter? Yes. She's beautiful. Here she is. Take her. Take her. Well, you'll need to rest. I'll leave you to it. What shall I do? Pick her up. She's so small. You won't hurt her just so long as you remember to hold her correctly. Always support her head. You see? Like. Her little neck's not very strong yet, you see. Are all babies this small when they're first born? Oh, some are even smaller. Mm. Millie, I've brought your visitor. Do you feel up to it? Can I, uh, can I hold her? If you want to. <laughs> She's beautiful. Aren't you? Yes. Yes, you're beautiful, just like your mother. <laughs> the most important thing to remember is just to relax. That helps the milk to flow. You might find that you're more comfortable lying on your side with baby beside you on the bed, or um, you could use what we call the football carry. Uh, you just turn baby round, hold her under your arm, right? like this, support her on the pillow, and then just cup the head to the breast, whichever's most comfortable. What's a football? Well, that's a ball that we use in... A um, I've brought some paperwork for you to do with baby's registration. Uh, might as well get out with it. Now, there's always paperwork, isn't there, no matter what we do. Would you like me to help you? Thank you. Right, it's a uh, full name. Millicent Jane Alcott. Date of birth? 14th of October. 
chosen a name for baby yet? Oh, doesn't matter, does it? There's plenty of time. Uh, now, father's name. Daniel Edward Alcott. And that was your father? He's gone to a better place. And they got rest his soul. Uh, Millie, I'm afraid you've misunderstood me. It's not your father's name I need. It's the father of the baby. Millie? Millie, you do know who the father is, don't you? I do not. Ben, um... Millie hasn't said anything to you about the father of her child, has she? I, I know it's strictly her own business if she doesn't wish to reveal his identity, but I... Well, I just feel that there's something not quite right. Well, she said nothing to me. Is it possible that her own father is the father of the baby? I'd cross my mind. How can any man do that? It happens. Of course, the other possibility is that she really doesn't know. Now, hang on a minute, Matron. She's not like that. She's an innocent. No, please, let me finish. She doesn't know because she hasn't made the connection between the act of intercourse and pregnancy. Well, you could be right. She's never been to school. Her only education appears to have been the Bible and lots of stilted Victorian novels. So if her father didn't want her to know about such things, it would be fairly simple to keep her in the dark. Surely you'd make some sort of natural assumption. How many people do you know have had to figure it out for themselves? <sighs> and come up with the right answers. Hmm... Well, somebody's going to have to broach the subject with her pretty soon, for her own good. Then the egg settles into the womb, and after about 40 weeks, it's developed into a child. I'll leave these here for you, if you have any questions. That's how we're all created, you know, Millie. You, me, everyone. Through the act of sexual intercourse. That's the only way you can have conceived a child. Around about nine months ago, you had sexual intercourse with a man, and that man is the father of your baby. I did not know I would have a child. He said I had a very precious gift, God's gift, and that if I were to give it to him, as he's God's chosen servant, I would be blessed. Who said this to you, Millie? Is it not true? Is it not God's gift? Well, I dare say it. It could be looked at like that. But should I not have done so? Oh, I was unsure. But he insisted it was God's will. If you were coerced into surrendering your virginity without fully understanding the consequences, then the man responsible took advantage of your innocence. There's no need for you to protect him. I do not believe he will do that to me. I'm afraid he's already done it. He was more than likely aware of your pregnancy. If he was, he did not say. Well, I don't wish to interfere. But this man has certain obligations to you and to your child, and he should be made to face them. I do not know how he can. He is already married. It is the pastoral Woodruff. Oh, uh, you've uh, come to see Miss Alcott, have you? Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't think one flower. Oh, would no, no, that's all right. Um, yes, Ben. I'd like to have a word with you. Something wrong? No, no, no. Everything's fine. But? Let's go and have a cup of tea.
Oh, it's you. You uh, startled me. Did I? How is the dear girl? Millie gave birth to a daughter this morning. You're raving, man. Your daughter. What do you mean? Uh, she's had a child? How? Oh, in the usual way. Well, if there's any truth at all in what you're saying, and I can't see how there is. Mind, it has absolutely nothing to do with me. Come on, she's already named you as the father. Well, the poor girl's out of her mind with grief. I'll have a talk to her. No, you don't go near Look, she was always fanciful, even as a child. Oh, she's making it up, is Yes! She? I don't think so. Now, you're going to pay, you understand? I'm not going to let you walk out on your responsibility. I'll make sure of that, but you never, you never go near Millie again. You understand? You understand? She trusted you. How could you do that to her? Well, we're all made of the flesh. And sometimes we are tempted by its weaknesses. Well, you're a man. You'd understand. Oh, I understand. something sure I was thinking of my father hmm. he would know what to do you don't have to do anything just for the moment you just have to rest I do not wish to see Pastor Woodruff again you don't have to. Oh, oh. All men aren't like him, you know, Millie. I do not wish to know any others. Well. I'm going to make you a nice cup of tea. Then I want you to try to get some sleep, all right? Ah, he uh, kept the appointment, did he? He did. Probably regrets it. Good. How's Millie? Well, she's a little distraught, understandably. Should I go in? I wouldn't. She's resting. Right, well, uh, I'll call in tomorrow then. I'll do that. Thanks. It must be Charlotte or Emily, I've decided. Mm, they're pretty. Is it family names? Oh, no. That is not my own family. The Bronte family? Have you read Wuthering Heights? No, but I've seen the old film with Laurence Olivier in it. It's very romantic. <laughs> Indeed it is. That decides me. Emily. Emily Orcott. Oh. <laughs> Wet. I've told everything. I used to know how to do this. <coughs> Did I? Hi, uh, everything okay? Mm. Oh, just brilliant. You weren't trying to do this, were you? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. Well, you can do the easy bit. All right, I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and this is a present the best the, uh, the stork club could do. The stork club? Yeah, that's the Wandon Valley Baby Boutique. It's a present for the baby. Oh, like Christmas. Yeah. How thoughtful. Old Marley was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. A Christmas Carol, Charles Dickens. You've read it? Yeah, well, only three times. <laughs> it's Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> oh, he's beautiful. You shall be our lord of the manor when we go home tomorrow. Tomorrow? You're going home tomorrow? Yes. We just can't dump Millie and the baby at this place. I'm talking 19th century. There's no plumbing, no hot water, no phone, no way of saying help. I'm in trouble. 
Dr. Ferris has been in touch with the Family Support Centre in Burrigan. They are going to assess the situation. Oh, when? Next week? Then. Next month? Millie and the baby are going back there then tomorrow. will you just stop for one moment and relax? Babies have been coming into the world long before hot and cold running water came along. There's a tank out there? Oh, yes. Some way of heating the water? A fuel stove. Right. Well, she's lived out there all her life. She was clean and healthy when she came into the hospital. I think we can safely assume that she's perfectly capable young capable? woman. Capable? She didn't even know how she got pregnant. A perfectly capable young woman who can cope a lot better than some of us may imagine. OK, what are you going to do for money, huh? She's eligible for the supporting parents' benefit. That's $106 a week plus $36 for the child. That's $140 a week. What am I talking about? She doesn't, matron, she doesn't even know what money is. Ben, what do you want me to do? Hmm? I have a busy hospital to run and I do not have a magic wand. Couldn't she stay here for a few more days? No, Ben. I'll grant you that the young woman is a little naive. She's also very pretty. If she were plain as a pike staff, you wouldn't be nearly so worried about her. That is one of the most hard-nosed, cynical remarks I've ever heard. It comes with the territory. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. We've got to help her! Do young women truly wear them? Sure. This one would really suit you. <laughs> <laughs> How did her hair become that colour? Spray. I can get some later and you can try it if you like. Oh, I'm not sure. Everyone does it. It's not illegal or anything. Oh. <laughs> jo, this is a picture of you. Um, yes, I did some of that. Does everyone have pictures of themselves in the periodicals? Um, no. Uh, the people in the magazines are models. Models? They're not real people? Oh, they're real. No, they're, they're models because that's what they do. They model. They put on the clothes and the makeup. They're, they're sort of like actors. Oh. What's wrong? Oh, I thought those people were like that all the time. Oh, sure, they are. For a moment I thought, how many goodly creatures there are here. How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. You thought that? It's Shakespeare, The Tempest. Don't you read books, Joe? Not the sort of books you read. <sighs> When I go home tomorrow, you shall visit and read my books and I shall read yours. All right. Are you going to be okay? Okay. Tomorrow, all right, when you, when you take the baby home, just you and the baby. I'm sure I shall. Many young women have done such things before me. I'm sure I'll be quite okay. <laughs> Do people really paint their faces in stripes to change the shape? Oh, it just sort of illustrates it. And what are those circles on her cheeks? Oh, you rub it in so it all blends. Benjamin! Did you know that a sincere smile includes at least one blink? Why don't you black out a few teeth while you're painting her up like a clown? Well, what's the matter, Ben? Everyone wears makeup. Well, I think she looks just fine without it. Jo says I could be a model, which is like being an actor, but you don't speak. Oh, really? Do you not think there is room in life for silliness? Really, I hate seeing you like this. It's just fun. Yeah, well, could you just take it off, please? Let's not upset Ben. Is that sincere enough for you? I mean, teaching people is smart. Do you believe this? I can't let you do this. What if something happens? Happens? If there's an accident or the baby's sick, how are you going to call for help? I do not know. I want you to come and stay with me for a while at my flat, just for a little while until Emily's a bit stronger. I, I don't like the idea of you staying here on your own. But this is my home. Yeah, I know that, but it's still going to be here another week or two. Besides, it's not just the baby. Who's going to look after you? Please, come and stay with me.
Yeah, the bedroom's through there. It's yours and, and Emily's. I'll crash out on the couch. Okay, I think I'd better go back to the hospital, see Matron about borrowing a bath, uh, nappies, bedding, singlets, those sorts of things. You're being very kind. <sighs> you must think me very stupid. No, not at all. Why do you say that? Perhaps because I feel myself that it is true. Well, it isn't. Look, you've got a lot of new things to get used to, that's all. I mean, it'll take a little time. Can I leave you here for a while? Um, I'd better go see about picking up those things. By all means, you may. I'll be back soon. I'll see you later, Emily. <sighs> Goodbye, Benjamin. Millie, you don't have to do that. I'll fix this dinner. Benjamin, if I'm to live under your roof, I must be allowed to earn my keep. Well, yes, but... Yeah, all right. Uh, Millie, could you, could you please just call me Ben? <laughs> I would love to call you Ben. <laughs> Ooh. There's that sound again. I heard it several times while you were out. Hello? Speaking. Uh, Who are you talking to? Right, yes. I was out. I know you were out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's coming now. Benjamin, I'm over here if you have something to say to me. Right, I'm on my way. Yeah, sorry. Okay, see you soon. This is a telephone. I'll, I'll teach you how to use it later, but, but basically people can talk to each other on it over, over a long distance. I mean, that was, <laughs> that was a farmer, and he wanted me to go over there. His, his mare's falling, he wanted me to, to help. Horse doctor. Horse doctor, right. <laughs> uh, you're going to be all right? I, I could be gone for a couple of hours. Oh, yes. I need to be on my own. Papa was off and away. Yeah. I, I hate to leave, but... If you've work to do, you must. I'll see you later. See you later. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Who's a filly? Oh, that's good. Emily all right? Last time I looked, she was spunky. Is that right? Spunky? Uh, not quite. <laughs> Jay teach you that? No. He's better than I am. You play the piano? Piano forte, but not as well as he does. Oh. Is this a television? A TV, yeah. I thought so. Now, this is the kind of music that I love. You mean instead of hymns, or...? Yeah, well, uh, well there are other kinds. All music's beautiful. You're beautiful. He's so good. Emily, listen. How music touches us. Can she hear it? Uh-huh. Although she probably wouldn't recognise a composer yet. <laughs> as long as she can hear it. Let me. Oh, it's too soapy. Oh. <laughs> Can't you see me? Uh, not clearly. She can't focus yet. Oh. How long before she can? Oh, a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'd like her to see how handsome you are. Like Heathcliff. Although, not as tall and, and not fierce. Remote and, and lonely like Heathcliff. It's a beautiful book. Very sad. Why do we like to be sad? I don't know. So, uh, what are you going to do? No hurry. She doesn't have to rush into any decision. Uh, Millie, how are you managing? Oh, she's doing just fine, aren't you? Do you need any uh, plastic pants? Ah, oh, mate, we've got plastic pants. Bibs? Yeah. Booties? <laughs> cardigans? Yep. What about a pram? A pram? Yeah, perambulator. We haven't got a perambulator. Well, I know where we can get one. Hmm? May I answer it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. No. Go for it. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Mr. Green? Yes, he is. Yes, I will. 
Oh. He wishes to speak to the vet. Not that. Yeah, thanks, Millie. Uh, may I go with Michael to see the perambulator? Yeah, Millie, you don't have to ask my permission. You won't be cross? No. Do you want to come, Ben? Ah, uh, no thanks, mate. Work. Hello? Is the weather in Clement? Uh, Will I need my coat? No, Mr. it's McCarthy. a beautiful day outside. Come on. Yeah, what's the problem? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll be there soon. I've read about shopping so often, but I never thought I'd actually go shopping. There's so many things to choose from. <laughs> I'm sorry I took so long, Michael. Oh. There's a new way to you see Sydney and Melbourne, the shops. Ah, oh, you won't believe it down there. I've read about Sydney in one of my father's books. Uh-huh. They were building a bridge. Well, they've, uh, they've finished the bridge now and they're building a tunnel underneath the harbour. Really? Really. Are you from Sydney, Michael? No, from Queensland. A place called Bribey Island. A tropical island? Uh, sort of, yeah. Like Robinson Crusoe's island? <laughs> Are they cannibals? Uh, yes, there are. We call them developers. <laughs> now you're joking. Yeah, I'm joking now. Hmm. What are developers? Ah, well, they're the uh, people that pull down trees and put in buildings where they're not supposed to be. And, oh, yeah. I see. Jake's never as funny when you've got to explain them, you know. Shall try to remember that. Good. So much to learn. I think we should hurry back. Ben worries about me. Yeah, he sure does. Listen, are you peckish? Peckish? I'm hungry. Do you feel like something to eat? Yes, I do. Yeah, great. Hold this. I'll show you the sights of Wandon Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Millie. Michael, come right. in and join us. Uh, what can I get you? Millie? What would you like to drink? An orange juice. Mm -hmm. One of those and uh, oh, a rum and coke for me, Cookie. Coming right up. Oh, is this the little one? Coochie, coochie, coo. May I? Oh, she's such a pretty little thing. But then your mother was a lovely young girl in her day. My mother? Such a romantic life. So tragic. There you are. Curry gemfish. Ah. <laughs> All those years locked up in another time. You said you knew my mother. Yes. Yes, I do recall her. The family lived near the bakery in Jacaranda Street. And, and your mother, Mary, she was engaged to be married to a local boy, William. Willie, oh, someone or other. Anyway, one day your father Don came into town, and and he was he was a moody young man. But oh, she fell in love with him head over heels, and broke off the engagement to marry him, and and then they moved to to a farm out on the flats, and we rarely heard or or saw them again. Your mother was missed, not your father. Oh, I'm sorry if it's painful for you. No. Please, go on. Well, then we heard that she'd had a baby girl and, and rumour had it that, that she'd run away and I always thought she'd taken the baby with her. But here you are. She must have been very unhappy. And very young. No, you sure you don't uh, want some of this? I <laughs> thought I might find you here. Benjamin! No, we're just having a bite to eat. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> as soon as you're through with that, I'll uh, drive you home if you like. I'm not ready to come home, Benjamin. Ah, <laughs> oh, hi. How's Emily? Just work out. Uh, <laughs> do you like some tea? Yes, please. Uh, we bought some things for Emily and for me. Uh, oh. oh, that's nice. Oh, sh oh. I'm going to pay Michael oh. back as soon as I get a position. A position? You mean a job? Well, I'll have to earn money if I'm to take proper care of Emily. 
We talked to Miss Watson and she knew my mother. I think people actually liked you there. Ah, that's our uh, Miss Watson, always one for a good story. <laughs> Papa always called my mother names. Oh, he never really spoke of her as a real person. But perhaps she was a good person sometimes. I think she must have had a good reason to go. Hey, listen, uh, do you want to uh, unpack these now? Oh, get them out of Ben's way. I've yeah. already taken up enough of your flat. Oh, look, really, it's fine, Mel. <sighs> Mate, <laughs> you're putting ideas into her head. Let's go for a walk outside, huh? Mm. You're taking her too far, too fast. You're keeping her in a fantasy world. I just want to give her a chance to adjust. And make decisions for her. No, Michael, you're doing that. No. No, I'm showing her the way things really are, through a, a crack in the door. Right, and you think that's the best thing for her, huh? No. no but it's obvious, Ben, that you really care for her, but you're treating her just like a father. You can't keep her in ignorance just because you're scared of what she's going to find out. You're smothering her. Well, thank you, Dr. Spock. Who asked you to get involved anyway? Oh, come on, I could ask you the same question. She's not your responsibility. She's not mine either. Right, and I suppose you would have left her alone on the farm, huh? No, but she's got to learn for herself her own strengths and her own weaknesses. And unless someone helps her, she won't know which is which. Woodruff told her it was okay for her to sleep with him. Look, Ben, she's not a fool. Yeah, I know. She's innocent, naive. Yeah, and you're pretty naive too if you can't see that she's growing too dependent on you. Emily, Emily, it's okay. It's all right, don't cry. Oh, it's all right, it's all right, don't cry. Oh, it's all right. What's wrong? I don't know, I think she might be hungry. Oh, it's all right, it's all right. I'm just here now. Oh, you're a beautiful baby, Emily. My mother must have loved me. She must. She must love me the way I love Emily. Do you realize that we're making all these plans for Millie and she hasn't even got the slightest intention of keeping them? I mean, what can we really do for her? Well, getting a job isn't the answer. Who, who's going to look after Emily while she's training? What about, uh, what about selling the farm? Mate, it's not the money that she needs. She... What about her mother? What about her? Well, maybe you should try to find her. Michael? I'm in here. Did you find anything? Uh, no, what's that? No. Something inside. Old farming magazines. More of them. What are they? Oh, they're just all old accounts, bills. Checkbook. Receipts. Oh. oh, there's Millie. Might be a mother. There's a strong resemblance. Oh. These are all addressed to Millie. They're all open. I bet Millie's never even seen them. Dear Millie, happy sixth birthday, lots of love and joy, Mum, Matt and Brian. She's got a whole family. Oh, 
my eighth birthday. Ninth? Tenth, eleventh, twelfth. She sent me a card every year. Papa never told me. This is your mother. To Millicent, love from mum. And there are also letters. And these postcards here from when she was on holidays. I think this is your family. Why didn't she visit me? Maybe she was waiting until to see if you'd forgiven her or not. I, I didn't think she still cared. She always loved me. Well, there's an address here. It could be easy enough to find a telephone number. Let's call her. Talk to my mother. Hmm. <sighs> She'll call back. Doesn't matter. Look, as soon as she comes home, she'll get the message. I don't even know who I spoke to. It was a man, and he sounded unfriendly. He was probably mystified. Why didn't you tell him who you were? He might have said he didn't want me to live in his house. It's your mum's house as well. I don't think she'll call now. Millie. I'll be all right. I've got Emily, and, and she's got me, and, and friends. Millie, she is going to call back. I think I'll take Emily for a walk. I'll go for it. I can't. Millie. Do you want me to? Ben, no. Come on, Millie, answer the phone. Go on. Hello? Yes, this is Millie. Is that really you? Yes, it's me! Yes! I'm scared. There's no need to be. Mother was happy to hear from you, wasn't she? But what if I'm not what she hoped for? You'll be all right, Millie. Do you, uh, you want a hand with that thing? Oh, no, mate, I can do it. Here. Let me. Yeah. Uh. Here you go. I don't know what you'd do without me. It's your bus. I don't want to go. Yes, you do. I'll miss you. Both of you. Come back and visit us sometime. I will. I will. Well, thanks for everything. Bye. I'll always remember your kindness, your gallantry. You're a very special person, Benjamin. I'll buy you a drink. Then uh, you can buy me one. 